Facebook is putting a hold on the development of a kids version of Instagram geared towards children under 13. Concerns have been raised about the vulnerability of younger users. Head of Instagram Adam Masseri says the company will continue to persevere with the idea. The idea was a version of Instagram that is designed to be safe for tweens. And I wanted you to hear straight from me that we're going to pause our work on the project. But I want to be very clear. I still strongly believe that it's the right thing to do. It has to be better to give parents the option to give their tweens a version of Instagram that was designed with them in mind, that it was designed to be safe for those between 10 and 12. One where there are no ads, where there are parental controls, where there's age appropriate content, where they can supervise and shape the experience in meaningful ways. We did ask representatives from Facebook to come on and they declined. Peter Lewis is the director at the Centre for Responsible Technology and joins us now. Peter, Instagram argues that kids are getting phones younger, misrepresenting their age and downloading apps that are meant for those 13 or older and that they believe something specifically designed for these younger kids is the way to go. Do they have a point? Their starting premise is that every kid should be on social media producing data to turn them into little consumers. And it flies in the face of the research that came to light only a couple of weeks ago with a Wall Street Journal expose into Facebook, which found that even with older teenagers, there was a real link, particularly on Instagram, to eating disorders, body image issues and suicidal ideation. So the idea that we want to give our kids access to this, this model of connection earlier, just with a few safety tweaks, doesn't really hold water. Well, more on that Wall Street Journal article that you mentioned there, um, it, it, particularly, as you say, talking about teenage girls and their experience with loneliness, anxiety, mm. eating issues. Facebook says that more of these teenage girls who said they struggled with the issues also said Instagram made those difficult times better rather than worse. That was their rebuttal. What do you make of that? Um, the context of the rebuttal was after the Wall Street Journal did not expose the research. The research had been presented to Facebook over the previous years. The issue had been that they'd sat on it. So when you're running a company which is designed to build networks and then find, find ways of monetizing it, you are always going to look for the justification to keep growing your network. The pushback, I think, from um, people that are concerned about not just Instagram for kids, but Instagram for teenagers and Facebook's for grown-ups, mm. is that we've got a model where we are rewarded for behaviours that are not healthy. And we've seen over the, the course of the pandemic that the, the model that Facebook employs to um, maximise engagement, amplify anger, pull people in for longer in order to, to build a business in understanding them and selling their data is a public health risk. Mm. And to not be thinking through how we can protect our kids from getting exposed to that risk before they've even reached puberty is really, really po problematic. It's also really concerning the way that um, Instagram has characterized this so-called back down today. They're due to give um, evidence to the US Senate on Thursday. And they're not talking about stopping the project. To use um, mm -hmm. Adam Masori's words, he wants to give us time to work with parents, experts and policymakers to listen to their concerns and then demonstrate the value and importance of this project. These guys are committed to having everyone online and on social networks that take their data for as long as they possibly can and really holding back kids as long as possible is in their interest and I suspect in our broader interest as well. So where's most of the pressure against this idea coming from? Well, the pressure has come from all angles. Um, the one place that it hasn't is internally, obviously, but as this has become more, when, when the idea of Instagram was first raised, there were a lot of um, not just advocates, but also legislators that were raising real concerns at the idea that you would turn 11 and 12 year olds into little consumers to build a marketplace around them. Now, this guy's saying they're not going to advertise. That's not the whole point. It's not just the sell selling of the ads, it's building up the data in, insights based on their own online behaviour and just conditioning themselves for a world where they get used to being observed in every moment of their online engagement, which I think is really problematic. Mm. A big company though, um, do you think they're going to use this time to you know, use a bit of their sway? 
Well, you know, they're a nation state, aren't they? And ultimately, around the world, um, these big global platforms are starting to become subject to regulation, and it tends not to be a left or right issue. There's a bipartisan recognition by governments that these guys need to have, you know, red lines and guardrails around the way that they, they build their power and their increasing wealth. These guys made billions during the lockdown. They are the one winners from the last couple of years. And to think that they are trying to work their colonisation deeper and younger into society is just horrifying. So hopefully the US legislators, but also Australian legislators will, will, will say enough is enough. Um, you need to t fundamentally rethink the way you regard children rather than seeing them as a market opportunity to be exploited. Peter Lewis, the director at the Centre for Responsible Technology. Thanks for joining us.